What's up guys, Hate King here bringing you some unexpected news regarding some rumors and leaks involving Resident Evil 9. So guys, it's 2023 at the moment, Resident Evil 4 Remake has just come out and we're still waiting on news for Resident Evil separate ways, which I'm assuming at this point is either going to come out at the very end of this year or is going to be part of a gold uh, edition for Resident Evil 4, which is going to come out early next year, because you know Capcom likes to do the gold editions now. They've done one with Resident Evil 5 back in the day, and then of course recently they've, won, they've done one with Resident Evil 7 and 8. So yeah, it's, it's to be expected. But then the big question comes to when is Resident Evil 9 coming out? And Resident Evil 9... Uh, apparently is the rumored Resident Evil Apocalypse. Now Apocalypse was originally stated or slated for a release in 2023 but uh, that got well that didn't happen obviously and yeah because Resident Evil 4 Remake took its spot that was an original 2022 release. Now here's the thing before I go into the leaks I'm going to talk about my own theory why it's possible that we could potentially see Resident Evil 9 coming out next year. Now, originally, the developers for Resident Evil 4 Remake were M2. They were the uh, sub developers in Capcom, and they the ones that did Resident Evil 3 Remake. However, because of the bad reception for Resident Evil 4, uh, sorry, Resident Evil 3 Remake, M2 decided to do a one-on-one -on -one fateful remake of 4. Capcom didn't want that, so M2 basically got booted off the project uh, between 2020 late, late 2020 and early 2021. And then Capcom Division 1 came in and ended up developing the game with M2 helping here and there. Uh, now Capcom Division 1, I believe, are responsible for the remakes of Resident Evil 2 and development of Resident Evil 7 and 8. So these guys have been working on these on these games like pretty much consistently over like a good good few years now, like jumping from one project to the next. So you have to wonder what game were they working on originally before Capcom went to them and said, hey pause this project and go and work on Resident Evil 4 Remake and the assumption would be that it was Resident Evil 9 or Resident Evil Apocalypse which means that the game didn't meet its 2023 release because they had ended up they ended up working on Resident Evil 4 Remake instead and that ended up coming up in 2023 instead which means whatever game was originally slated for a 2023 release would therefore move perhaps to the next year meaning that there is a chance we could see Apocalypse in 2024 next year and plus there's always this Two, four to two year development gap. Capcom themselves have said they want their games to take about two years and a half to make. And development on Resident Evil 9 potentially would have started in 2020. So four years later for it to come out, it would it would make sense, wouldn't it? Uh, at least that's, that's my assumption. Those are my thoughts. That's what I think is going on. But yeah, let's go into the leaks. And before I do begin, remember to like and subscribe. And yeah... Let's see what this guy has to say. Uh, so, there's a new leaker on Twitter now calling himself Chris Marks. Okay? Or Marks Chris. Now, he's been posting a lot of Resident Evil related news recently. And uh, we're going to go and read through this. Okay? So, he made a post. He made a post back in May 19. Resident Evil 9, RE9, will primarily resolve, revolve sorry, around the character of Chris Redfield, with the potential inclusion of other classic characters in the narrative. However, it is my belief that the story arc involving Ethan Winters has concluded, or at least temporarily reached its conclusion. Now, we all know, you know, Ethan Winters' story is done. Capcom themselves pretty much confirmed this. When they released the uh, DLC for Rose, they pretty much said it was an attempt to close off that storyline. That is finished, okay? We're not going to revisit Rose, Mary, or what is it, Mia and that for a good few years, I think. You know, because, the get, you know, her story jumped ahead in time. And during that period, we know that Chris is still alive. Now, Chris being the primary character, yeah, I can see that happening because there was that entire loose end with involving Chris and the BSA and him wanting to go after the BSA for using bioweapons in the field. Now, obviously, there was also the interview where the developers for the DLC for Resident Evil 8 said that they had a choice. Either they do the Chris versus BSA plot or they do a DLC involving Rosemary and they chose to do Rosemary. Now, that could have just been 
them talking. Do you know what I mean? I could have just been them trying to throw people off the scent. Uh, you know, instead of just, you know, just by saying to keep it a surprise that Resident Evil Nine will actually be about this. Uh, about Chris and PSA plot because it would make sense, wouldn't it? I mean, that was a pretty big loose end. I mean, why would that be DLC, right? Why wouldn't you just finish off the winter storyline? So yeah, uh, but again, we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Um, now, during this time period, I believe when the Summer Game Fest was happening, or before I get into that, uh, another post. So this is, uh, again, this is the same. This was in May 19th. He says, Resident Evil 9 will primarily emphasize action-oriented gameplay elements. Now, I know a lot of people are going to hate this. They're going to be like, wait, they're going back to action. They're pulling a Resident Evil 6. What, what's going on? Why is Capcom doing this? It makes a lot of sense. Chris's uh, segments have always been action-oriented. It makes no sense to go to horror when Chris is such a big action hero. I mean, the only way you can probably get away with doing a horror a game with Chris or any of the returning characters is if you, I don't know, if you do some sort of hallucination fear induced virus or something, you know, go all scarecrow perhaps, but that, it doesn't make sense. If you're going to use these characters, if you're going to use the classic characters like Chris Redfield, it makes sense that the game is going to be action. There's also the fact that uh, each of these uh, uh, like Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil especially were focused on certain uh, aspects. They were paying homage to certain aspects of the Resident Evil series. Resident Evil 7 paid homage to, to classic Resident Evil. Resident Evil 8 paid homage to Resident Evil 4. Plus it sort of was like a prototype to get, you know, as a setup to Resident Evil 4 Remake coming out. It would make sense, therefore, that Resident Evil 9 would, you know, would pay homage to perhaps Resident Evil 5 or Resident Evil 6, but better. Remember, Capcom have learned from their mistakes. I don't think this is going to be the same guys that are going to go into this and screw this up. They've learned from their mistakes and they're going to try and do better. I mean, compare compare what they did between Revelations 1, Resident Evil 6, and Revelations 2. You know, Re Revelations 1 introduced this whole scope of having been able to play as multiple characters and intercrossing storylines. And then we went into Resident Evil 6, and yeah, I, I like Resident Evil 6, but it is a very flawed game. And then we go, we went into Revelations 2, which was bit, sort of a big improvement. You know, instead of having these multiple campaigns, instead of having four campaigns, we had two campaigns, and we played, you know, as, as four characters instead of playing as seven characters. So it was a lot more down, you know what I mean? A lot more balanced. And I feel like they would do the same thing going forward with any future installment if they decide to go back to that direction. Anyway, going forward, uh, we go to May 26, where Chris Marks, now this, this is the point where I feel like he might be a bit iffy, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see if he's reliable. Now, this guy has talked about other games as well, by the way, and he has gotten some information regarding those games correct. So right now, this guy is 50-50. It can't be ruled out that the announcement of Resident Evil 9 will occur during the Summer Games Fest. Okay, so this was May 26th, and he said it can't be ruled out that they, they might reveal that there. Which, to be fair, yeah, they could have revealed it there. They could have. I mean, one of the big hopes, especially for me going in and many other people, was that Capcom would reveal the DLC for separate ways, but it wasn't. So, I mean, it would have been the logical place, but they didn't, so yeah. Uh, and then we go to... I'm trying to... So we go back to May 16 where he does say, I expect Capcom to announce the next entry in the Resident Evil series this year, possibly at the Summer Games Fest. So he does say that he expects Capcom to reveal it. Now here's the thing, if Resident Evil 9 is coming out next year, it would make sense for it to be revealed, to be teased this year. Now he says, he says possibly, he says possibly at Summer Games Fest. He never said it would be. And then when going into May 26, he, he says it can't be ruled out that it can't be. So he never says it's going to be revealed at Summer Games Fest. He's saying it cannot be ruled out and that it could potentially possibly be revealed there. It didn't happen, but he never said it would. He just said it's very possible. And like me and many others, we assume, you know, stuff like Resident Evil 4 DLC will be revealed as well. And it wasn't. So, uh, so we go to... Okay, I'm trying to find all the dates here. So we go to June 7th. While it is true that there is a staple possibility of Resident Evil 9 being announced at Summer Game Fest, it is important to note that its announcement at the event is not inevitable. Therefore, it would be advisable to maintain a level of cautious optimism and keep expectations modest. So at this point, he's saying it could be revealed, 
But at the same time, it might not be. So don't get too hyped up, okay? He is making it very clear that it's a 50-50 chance it will reveal or not. So, so far, he's not said anything that makes him that makes him wrong. Do you know what I mean? He's been very clever with how he words, how he chooses his words here. Moving on to June 8. Resident Evil 9 will not be showcased at the Summer Games Fest. Although there was previously some anticipation and speculation regarding its possible inclusion, it has now been definitely ruled out. Resident Evil 9 is likely to be announced later this year. Now, Summer Game Fest began at, on June 8th, but the Capcom showcase was on 12th, right? It would have been it would have been funny if he had just come out straight away on 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 the 12th and said, "Yeah, it's not been announced." Obviously, you know, at least then his in, uh, credibility would have gone down. Instead, he announces it when the game, you know, when the summer game fest is just just about to begin. So clearly, he has some sort of inside information, possibly where he probably found out. Oh yeah, the game's not being revealed at the game fest, and it's like, okay, best let everyone know. And and it's four days before the Capcom showcase. At this point, he's saying it's not going to be revealed. Okay, no one knows if it is or not. Do you know what I mean? You know, we kind of went in expecting some kind of news during the Capcom showcase at best, but this is him pretty much saying it's not being revealed. Don't get your hopes up now. Okay, it's official. And it's like, okay, cool, it's fine. So then we jump into uh, into some recent posts where he talks about the games now. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, <laughs> there's so there's so much stuff here to talk about. Okay, so we go now. This now we go on to yeah. This is recent stuff. This is stuff he posted on June eighteenth. Okay, okay. So this is the big one. Classic characters such as Claire, Jill, Leon, and Chris, protagonist. Okay, he's making it very clear that Chris is the protagonist of this game. Will return in the upcoming Resident Evil game. Players will also have the chance to play as other characters in certain missions. The game is expected to focus less on horror and more on action. Okay. So, yeah, this is big news because this actually adds up. Just a second. My mouth is very dry and it's the morning. Gotta get that coffee in. That in you know, I need that. <laughs> okay, so he's making it very clear that the, the four cool characters are returning, which is funny because... This matches up with rumors from last year. I believe Dos Golem might have said this, or another leaker, where they said that Resident Evil 9 would bring back the four main characters, right? Chris, Jill, Claire, and Leon for the first time in one big game. And that it would be... that Those leakers said that, that it would be the final Resident Evil game. Correction. It will be the final numbered Resident Evil game. We will not be getting a Resident Evil 10 off of this. Whatever Resident Evil games we get after would would have subtitles basically they would no longer be numbered and resident evil 9 would be the final game starring chris jill claire and leon you know and their stories would be wrapped up and now we're getting this guy saying that these guys are coming back that these four characters are coming back and he's also saying there will be other characters as well which is again something those leakers said as well that other characters would return to um now, again, the emphasis on action. Again, if, if, if these characters are coming back, they are action heroes. They are no longer these scared individuals. These are characters that kick ass. I mean, look at the trailer for Resident Evil Death Island, for Christ's sake. They're, they're basically the, the Avengers now. So it would make sense that any game starring Chris, Leon, Claire, and Jill would be an action game. Okay, People need to understand this, and, and, and they don't want to. Resident Evil is, is no longer a horror franchise. To be fair, it never really was. It was a mix of both. It was a mix of action and horror since early days. I mean, Resident Evil 3, for example, was a mix of horror and action. And that game gave you the choice of fight or flight, so it's always been there. So for people crying, oh, they're, they're, they're ruining it, it's like, no, it, it was, there, was never, there was nothing to ruin it from the beginning. So hold your horses, yeah? Okay, going to his next post. It will still be a horror game. The camera mode is yet to be confirmed, but there is a possibility that players may have the option to choose between third person and first person perspectives. I expect it to release later in 2024. Capcom should start take talking this year. Okay. So he's making a point of saying it is it is heavy action, but there will still there will still be it will still be a horror game as well. So I'm assuming there will be horror elements. Like 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 every Resident Evil game that was an action game, there were still horror elements. I mean Resident Evil 4 is an action game. 
it still has horror elements. Resident Evil 5 is an action game. A big, big action game. There are still slight horror elements. And Resident Evil 6 is a huge action game with some little emphasis on horror, okay? There's still some horror elements there. Like, so, but obviously, Capcom, like I said, if they are going back to an action route, they will try to balance it out, so... There's also the fact that he's saying that it's gonna that it might be third and first, which again makes a lot of sense. Okay, Resident Evil Gold, uh, sorry, Resident Evil 8 Gold Edition felt like a huge experiment for Capcom to sort of test it out, say, you know, to test out whether they want to do both modes at the same time. And I feel like Resident Evil 8 was a huge success on that front. Personally, I, I still think it plays better in first person, but the option of being able to play in first and third person being available from the get-go would be would be a welcome change and it would and it would be nice to have that and i feel like that was their aim to sort of play through that to sort of test it out and be like okay can we can we do both modes at the same time and i feel like it worked but obviously they need to uh, incorporate that into the cutscenes as well that's one of the things that sort of took took me out at least plus not being able to say ethan's face like it is annoying um he expects it to release in 2024, okay? I've already given my reasons for why I expect it to come out in 2024. Again, if this was originally Apocalypse, and it originally was supposed to come out in 2023. So, yeah, I imagine these guys, I imagine Capcom Division are hard at work. Because, again, a lot of people are like, oh, this is going to take years. And it's like, it doesn't. I feel, I feel like they, 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 they tune out these games very fast. Because think about it. Resident Evil 7 came out in 2017. And then in 2019, we got Resident Evil 2 Remake. That was done by the same team. And then in 2021, we got Resident Evil Village, again, done by the same team. And then Resident Evil 4 Remake, two years after in 2023, again, by the same team. Now, I know what you're thinking. Since there's this big tw two years, you know, in between uh, Capcom Divisions 1's games, wouldn't it make sense for it to come out in 2025, uh, you know, since they've done Resident Evil 4? Um, yeah, it would, but again, it... A Resident Evil 4 remake originally, like I said, was being developed by M2 for, for a good few years. Like, I, I think about two years before they got booted out. And then they, you know, you know, Capcom Division 1 came in and took over. So, again, you have to wonder, what game were they working on before they left it? Before they put a pause on it and they went back and they went and worked on that instead. So, I think it was Resident Evil 9. Uh, and yeah, uh, there's another post he makes. Uh, Capcom will also likely start working on Call Veronica remake and possibly Resident Evil 5 remake at some point in the future. So he's also making it clear that there's a Call Veronica remake and RE5 coming out, which uh, makes sense. Uh, if you guys remember, uh, Capcom paused development on a fan remake of Resident Evil 1 and Call Veronica. And uh, we did get that survey recently as well, asking us what remake we want next. But I feel like, I feel like uh, Capcom is already working on the next remake. I don't think they needed to ask us. Maybe just an idea of how badly people want it, maybe, and whether to really focus on it or not. Like, do people really want Cold Veronica? Like, is there a lot of demand for it? There is. Okay, really, really work on that. But yeah, uh, that that seems to be pretty much it. Like, yeah, that's it. That's that's his post. That is pretty much all he has on regarding Resident Evil Nine. And yeah, I'm excited. If this is true, if this is true. We should, we should technically be getting a tease at the end of this year. Remember what happened in Resident Evil 3 Remake? Uh, they, they announced a Resistance and then towards the end of 2019, I believe. I believe it was 2019. Towards the end of 2019, we ended up getting a state of play. And then they, they, they decided to they were going to talk about the campaign for Resistance, which ended up being revealed as Resident Evil 3 Remake. So I'm wondering if they're going to do the same thing where we're going to get a tease at the very end of the year now there's rumors that there's going to be another playstation showcase maybe we get it there because uh, capcom have been revealing their resident evil games recently during playstation showcases and state of play so maybe we're going to get lucky and that's when we're going to get it uh because if it is going to come out next year that would be the you know they would have to tease it tease it by the end of this year they would have to um but we'll have to wait and see because there's also the separate ways dlc but again for people worried that they wouldn't talk about multiple games at once uh they would they would because the last capcom showcase talked about uh, both the you know it revealed the dlc for resident Evil 8 and they talked about resident Evil 4 remake at the same time so i can see them doing it again here we get the reveal for the separate ways campaign but then we also get a tease for resident Evil 9 going forward so yeah if it is coming out next year we have to get some sort of tease unless again unless the game is coming out at the very end of 2024 
in which case we could get a tease in early 2024 instead so you know capcom likes to be very close at home when they're releasing their games like there's always this big eight to ten month gap between when they reveal it and when it comes out so yeah we'll have to wait and see we'll have to wait and see but yeah that's that's that guys i'm excited i hope this is legit i hope it's true and i cannot wait i can't wait uh i'm looking forward to playing resident Evil 9 especially if if all the four main characters are coming back in it and i'm hoping that it does it is a big enough game that it does start closing off a lot of loose ends because yeah the series needs to sort of come to an end with its main characters because it's been going on for too long and i am tired i am tired of it uh i want to see an ending while i'm still alive and breathing okay uh no very dark but that's that's the gist, man. That's the gist. I mean, you know, Hideo Kojima managed to wrap everything up with Metal Gear Solid 4 in, you know, after all these years. And then we ended up getting these spin-offs or, or, or other games with the prequel era. So, I, you know, I'd rather see Capcom do that. You know, close up everyone's storylines and then we just get new characters and new storylines going forward. Instead of waiting years to see where things go. Like, you know, after all these years, we still don't know what Ada's organization is about, for example. Like, come on. Give us something here, right? Alright guys, that's my video. I hope you liked it. As always, remember to like and subscribe. And I shall see you when I shall see you.